Hi, you're with India Post Live. India Post Live is, of course, India's first online news conversation portal. I'm Ishan Russell, and India Post is, of course, a forum where you too can participate in this discussion. Today, we're talking about pornography and how it's affecting relationships. But before we do that, I want to tell you about IndiaPostLive.com. IndiaPostLive.com is, of course, the website where you can log in and post your comments as far as this show is concerned or any other shows that we do. You can log in and post your comments over there. But there's something else very interesting over there. There's a game that you can go and play online. And in that game, you can be either Narendra Modi, Arvind Kejriwal, or even Rahul Gandhi. And all you have to do is drive them <laughs> in that little truck and try to get as many votes as possible. That game is called the Vote Race. So we request you to go out and play it. It's a lot of fun. It's a pretty cool game. So you can have a lot of fun with the election. That's as far as the election fever is concerned. Now getting back to the subject at hand. Pornography and relationships. Yes, pornography is here whether you like it, whether you don't like it. It is part of our lives in, to the extent that everybody at some level is aware of it, has experienced in the sense, has seen pornography and it's been on for some time now. It's not just with the advent of the internet. The internet might have made it more commonplace and it's not specific to a gender, it's not specific to sexual preferences, it's not specific to anything other than just perhaps sexual titillation. So we'll talk about pornography and the effect it's having on modern day relationships today and first let's take you through a story about that. Relationship counsellors and andrologists say the popularity of pornography is beginning to change relationship dynamics in the real world, often leaving partners distressed. 72% of adults who visit pornography sites are men. Compulsive porn viewing can distort the viewer's expectations of sex with real people and control his life. Studies have shown that a pornography addict will seek out sexual material despite feelings of guilt, destruction of family and legal consequences such as downloading child pornography. Pornography compulsions are difficult to break. A 2013 study in Canada by Resch and Alderson on pornography use and relationship satisfaction found that women feel threatened by their partner's frequent use of pornography. They may fear they are constantly being compared to females depicted in porn and may resent their partners being aroused by images of other women. Porn addicts tend to display difficulty with concentration, boredom, shame and guilt and may grow aggressive towards women causing severe relationship dissatisfaction. All right, so do you agree with that? Uh, do you think pornography is a problem? Do you think it's an advantage? Do you think it leads to in a country that doesn't talk much about sex, at least it's some way of informative learning? Is it really informative? There's a whole host of opinions out there and we'd love for you to share your opinion with us. IndiaPostLive.com is the name of the website where you can log in and post your comments. Also, uh, hashtag IndiaPostLive to your tweets or uh, use our Twitter handle at IndiaPostLive to join in this conversation. Today, to discuss this in the studio, I have with me uh, Anita. Mishra, she's a psychologist and a psychiatrist so for the past 20 years has seen a whole host of problems that people have with their, uh, with themselves <laughs> rather and uh, Dr. Shilpi Tiwari joins us, he's an andrologist and a sexologist and um, pleasure to have you both over here. Uh, Anita, I'll start with you, as far as pornography is concerned, it's always been there to, to that extent, I mean it's not just the internet has brought porn to our living rooms or to our drawing rooms or to our bedrooms, it's always been there be it literature, be it any other format is it a becoming a problem now or uh, in terms of relationships let's confine ourselves to that is it becoming a problem as far as relationships are concerned in terms of expectations from partners of course it is uh, the growing cases uh, of depression anxiety and uh, dissatisfaction in sexual relationships and marital discords and uh, divorce cases mm -hmm. The increasing data, the statistics shows that there is something severely wrong with the system. Mm. And technology, of course, pays its share in increasing this problem. So when you are all the time comparing your partner with a virtual thing which you have you know, just seen, which is not actually true, most of the times it is not true also, it is exaggerated, it is uh, created to appeal people, appease people and titillate the senses. So it is unfair to expect that much from your partner and it is like expecting much more than what your partner can really give you in terms of uh, trust and love. 
Yeah. An interesting point you make over there. What has your experience been like with all your patients? Do you think pornography is something that is rather commonplace now and uh, increasing number of, uh, I mean, we are all after all in India where even sex education is confined to a few chapters in the biology textbooks where nobody's really taught about sex and whether the right way, wrong way, anything. I mean, we parents don't t t tell our children. So, I mean, pornography often becomes a tool that is useful as well. I agree, with you, but before that, I like to thank you all for starting such a wonderful concept of a web channel and then taking up such uh, such topics. Now, coming to the question, yes, pornography is a two-edged sword. I must say, it can educate in a way for those who don't really know. Many people in India don't really know even how a sexual act is done. Mm. But on the other hand, I'll label it as a sort of uh, a mythology of uh, a sexual act where there are studs and there are nubiles and you can label as uh, any way. So uh, the expectation of both the partners and the, both in sense of receiving pleasure and giving pleasure, I think they are mismatched. And a lot uh, is because they don't really care how a pornographic film is shot. Mm. Now, a scene can be shot over a period of two days or three days or something like that with maybe an assistance of some medications. But when it is shown to a person or a girl, especially if he or she is a young aged person, now the discrimination of right from wrong becomes really tough. So the expectation is really, uh, it, it falls short of the reality. So that is where different kinds of uh, anxieties and comparisons, they all creep in and that's the real problem. It can teach mm. also in the sense that uh, at least I can say that when I was young, mm. quite a number of people, they even didn't know what a sexual act was. Now people know what exactly is a sexual act. So part of the physical thing is taught, but the actual, uh, um, the sexual act is not just a physical act. Mm. It involves a lot of relationships, a lot of uh, emotional uh, aspect also. And that thing, I, I don't, uh, thing that this thing is uh, really taken right. care of. Is it confined to gender? Because uh, I mean, the studies uh, so certainly show a certain skew that as more men watch it, uh, more, more men watch porn or perhaps are addicted to it, if I may say so. But uh, they, do women also watch porn? Do they? Uh, I I agree with you. Women do watch porn because I believe that there are like uh, there are uh, uh, pornographers who make porn specially specifically for women, which is not as catering to the male taste, but catering to a more demure female taste. That that's what I was reading about. You'll be internet. surprised to know that nearly thirty to forty percent of the couples who come for uh, counseling, as far as these sexual uh, problems are concerned, is that the female partner herself she prods up the uh, male uh, companion and then she pushes the person and then she her exp uh, and uh, f uh, to fulfill her expectations so that's the new the thing which we are seeing among indians at least mm. uh, the data as far as 26% or 28% regarding canadians i think that's really it it falls short it it is not really depictive of uh, the actual percentage of uh, females who might be watching pornography as well Right. But, do, but do we have some statistics which proves that after seeing these sites, uh, they were able to cater to their partner's needs and demands as per their interest? I mean, are there any statistics available that, uh, okay, after seeing this, they were better in their bed performances? That, that, that is exactly what I'm pointing. Yeah. They can come to know the exact kind of a sexual act they can yeah, perhaps, they, perhaps they, many would not know about fellatio or about any oral sex they, for that yes yes they can uh, they know more about the calm sutra positions that way but it, that's it beyond that i don't think they'll do anything else because uh, it after all it's just a movie and mm. it is uh, something it is i'll say superhuman mm. and uh, anyone who wants who who will try to replicate it he'll really fall short and then all sorts of psychological problems will creep in. There, there are a lot of issues, I guess. We need to really ponder over those mm. situations and 
ask those people that is that craving is satisfied or justified or rather it gets aggravated. I feel it, uh, it is a vicious circle. Once you get into that trap and mm. that loop because sexuality is a manifestation of your supreme uh, being with your partner, you know, your relationship. A sexual act is not just a physical act. It is also a culmination of your feeling for each other. If, of course, you are in a um, legal relationship, then if you're committed emotionally mm. and uh, lawfully and legally. So, but there are other issues uh, related with it. When you're just... I think you are quite correct on that account. Uh, and uh, pornography, this is my real suspicion, mm. that pornography will uh, increase the incidence of a non-committed promiscuous sexual act. Although we have to uh, go in details of that mm. and as you are rightly said that serious studies need to be done on the effect of, sex, uh, of pornography and the sexuality and promiscuity and non-committed relationships right. as well as the incidence of STDs and pregnancies because i'm dealing with one of uh, i just dr kamal Khurana, sorry i'm for interrupting you there uh, anita but uh, dr kamal Khurana from the marriage and relation uh, from uh, he's a marriage and relationship counselor he joins us live uh, via skype thanks very much for coming in uh, dr Khurana, and uh, listening patiently to our discussions uh, what would you have to say as far as pornography is concerned How, uh, do you think uh, a lot of marriages uh, are being affected or relationships are being affected by pornography uh uh, I'm really happy with the discussion that's going on and uh, I really appreciate the great inputs that uh, all the guests here are saying. Uh, what I have to say is more than relationships, it has to do with more of orientation towards sexuality that pornography impacts. Mm -hmm. So pornography right from teenage, it's so easily accessible, right from teenage the concept of sexuality, mm -hmm. the concept of the other gender, the concept of uh, relating bodily gets distorted because obviously this is some information that we get. It becomes more of a mechanical act than an act of intimacy, act of connection. Now because we are humans, we have minds and we connect emotionally as well, more emotionally rather. Right. It, has to do, it has to do with fantasy, it has to do with a lot of things that need to be understood well and then the act can be actually the way it should be as we in this era call it love making. So more to do with uh, making the best out of uh, this physical intimacy hmm. is where I'm uh, talking here. So there are many researches on uh, the whole concept of intimacy which includes uh, physical intimacy as also. So there's a research by McCobby which says that uh, emotional intimacy leads to a better physical intimacy which in turn leads to a better emotional connectedness and sense of belonging between a couple which gets completely missed out when it is just seen as an emotional act as portrayed by the pornography. All right, but uh, as far as uh, the, the, the women are concerned, because uh, uh, when we talk about pornography, many would just say men, teenage men, and only between the age of say 14 to 22. Or, I think the age group is wider. The, the audience for pornography is much wider. And even uh, middle-aged marriages might be getting affected by it because thanks to the advent of the internet, everybody has a device that can connect and immediately give right. you images uh, that could titillate you in that sense. Correct, that's correct. So need to exploration has been always a very basic human need. Hmm. So when we talk about pornography or sex, it's again need to exploration. Hmm. Sex is a very pure thing and physical intimacy is something really natural which is, is a basic need. Now but then when it is curbed or wrongly, uh, 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 I'll say suppressed, hmm. it will come out. The need has to, if the need exists, the fulfillment will be there. That's hmm. definite. But how it is uh, oriented, it's a very big question and as a society as a whole we need to understand and answer this question in the right manner, this is what I think. Alright, but uh, Anita, as far as uh, the individual is concerned now, relationships have also not become about a family or a couple, it's about an individual, what am I getting out of it, what are you getting out of it, that kind of a, uh, that ensures that pornography perhaps becomes almost a second uh, option or if perhaps in some cases becomes a preferred option rather than your partner because uh, with pornography many I mean from the studies that I've read on the internet every time you click on a button you experience a newer kind of a uh, gratification so that instant gratification that today's day and age can provide us that could really uh, bring us down to just an individual and not be part of a larger group or a family or a society. 
Mm, right. But again, uh, it depends upon person to person. Okay. To what an extent the person wants to take it, you know. Uh, as I said earlier, sexuality is, it has to be experienced through various channels, you know. It is not only the physical act, the way you feel, the way you uh, take yourself uh, in the front of other and in a relationship, how you consider yourself, how you weigh yourself, what is the value. So that's how the self-image is created by various multi-dimensional factors and mm -hmm. sexuality is one of them. And sexual performance and uh, gratifying it through uh, some virtual uh, you know, medium doesn't really satisfy all other needs which needs to be catered and fulfilled to experience the total um, experience as such. All right, uh, Dr. Tiwari, you want to comment on that? Uh, one thing which, uh, which I would like to point out is that uh, we are, that besides a routine pornography, we are also seeing something like sex, uh, cyber sex. Mm. Now, cyber sex, just as we are uh, talking with uh, Dr. Khuran on uh, through net, so people are indulging in cyber sex too. So this is also an aspect of pornography included in the modern technology. So. This leads to another uh, problem which is like uh, the partner is not true to the, uh, yeah. yes. So one thing is that also. So this thing also should be looked into. So this is one thing. Now as far as a routine pornography is concerned, the expectations of the person himself or herself as well, as well as the gratification part of it, it becomes so high that people come to us then saying uh, with the problems like premature ejaculation. The person is perfect otherwise. Mm. Uh, in uh, within the scientific limits and definitions of premature ejaculation or impotence. But after watching pornography... <laughs> Something the, going on for like yes, two hours. Yes, and yes, yes. A person uh, will come and say that I am having intercourse for uh, maybe 10 minutes, but I want to increase it up to 45 minutes. So, so, <laughs> so this is the yeah, kind but of. Are people uh, increasingly taking medication for such problems? I mean, obviously, the co most common example that comes to mind is Viagra. Even if you're perfectly healthy and if you're not impotent, you might be taking Viagra to increase sexual performance. Do cases like that come? But Viagra will not uh, increase the duration of act. Mm -hmm. If you are already, if a, if a person is already having a good sexual potency, mm. there is no erectile dysfunction in the person. I'm talking about Viagra. Mm. So the Viagra will not have an effect on that. Mm. Okay. And it won't increase the duration of uh, an intercourse way beyond 10 minutes or anything like that. But people are taking uh, over-the-counter medicines like that only. In fact, uh, Viagra is one of the most abused drugs in mm. India today. And everyone is to be blamed for that. Besides that, now we have uh, an increased incidence of those. Now I think it has been restricted, but an increased incidence of uh, post-coital pills, mm. which was being given to a huge lot of pay people. Fortunately, it has been curbed now. And that drug, it had so many disadvantages and counter side effects in the form of menstrual problems and even uh, missed abortions mm -hmm. and uh, failed abortions, partial abortions and young children, uh, young females uh, having uh, pregnancies after that. So these are all side effects of pornography, but I don't know what exactly is the solution of that. Because, all right, because I don't think banning porn, uh, Dr. Kurana, and I don't know whether you'd agree with me on this, but I don't think banning porn is a solution. It's here to stay. It's the same thing as cigarettes or alcohol or any other thing. I mean, in terms of anything in excess can be addictive, but in small measures, it can be invigorating to one's sexual life, can it? You're so right. Uh, nothing can be banned. Remember this very, very important fact, as I said, that if it's a need, it'll lead to fulfillment. And such a normal, pure act only thing is that we humans, uh, we've gone beyond reality. So when we move beyond reality, we create problems for ourselves. It's such a normal thing in any other living species. They don't even have to think it about sex. They just do it. Here, when we have wrong orientations, wrong orientations uh, lead to all such problems. Earlier, the concepts of child marriages were there, but then they are banned because they have their own new types of complications. Now. That, question, that, that thing, child marriage, used to sort out one uh, need, but then it created some other problems. Because only in, information is the solution. 
right information right orientation and then this need will be fulfilled then i think it's going to crack the problem otherwise uh, all such things that we are discussing around uh, uh, these functions that come up with because of all these things will keep on happening and this will be always continuing till the time we don't focus our attention on inform imparting information in the right manner mm -hmm. talking about intimacy uh, from a sense of very uh, 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 purity so intimacy is such a pure thing and a normal thing that has to happen between the two genders that's the reason nature created these different polarities to to unite so we should talk about uh, more about uh, friendship we should talk about the purpose of everything the the reason behind uh, uh, the need of intimacy we should talk about such things at a nice at the right age so in india we focused on sexuality and we started having sexuality in our curriculums just at a basic physical level but we never had any uh, content on sensuality understanding what a man is understanding what a woman is we never talked about that so a times will come when we'll be talking around all such things and we'll be uh, then taking the problem out of the uh, the box all right thanks very much dr khurana for joining us and we'll hope to have you on you know on many such discussions which we at india post life do promise to continue because this is our lives up after all i mean everybody is a sexual being everybody has done whatever they had to with whoever they had to or are doing it so talk about it indiapostlife.com is the name of the website you can go there log in and post your comments you can also use twitter hashtag #indiapostlife to your tweets or use our twitter handle at #indiapostlife but talking about uh, school curriculum talk you know when i was a teenager I, i mean i did not know about orgasm but i knew pornography and I, that was easily accessible but now in my class when you were talking about sexual education you were told about the body parts but you never knew why so that is there something that is being addressed in the present education system has it changed uh, i mean because the concern would be for teens i mean uh, who are the most vulnerable aren't they but do you really think that these kind of sites are sufficing that need hmm. you know we need to have an open uh, communication interpersonal communication with children certainly they are at a very very vulnerable stage where their minds are very receptive their minds are very very uh, adaptive to I'm the curious. to the yeah, of course curious and they are exploring we cannot uh, stop them exploring but right kind of information right content at the right time has to be served if your uh, stomach and your bellies are not prepared to digest that food and if you just start serving that food obviously mm. it will create indigestion isn't it so we need to wait and we need to communicate in a in a very very effective manner to our children that how i mean how these sites are uh, you know serving exaggerated uh, information to you and what is the reality and what is the authenticity so all right that's it orgasm uh, what you are talking about is orgasm is something to be felt mm. so you can't teach to a child no but at least you can make the child aware of yes the... there are a lot of questions no you can't are... make a child aware about orgasm orgasm by def definition is subjective so you can't make a child aware of orgasm you can only make aware you can only make the child aware of the act itself beyond that the feelings and emotional aspects these things are beyond teaching they have to be now some things have to be explored uh, themselves <laughs> yeah explored or they have to be left to the nature right. with time nobody can learn But emotional that's the problem that that with time has been hastened to i mean the uh, the, the biggest solution i think child the, has the, access to yes i would i uh, one thing which has cropped up is that in my mind is that uh, uh, the solution lies in economic freedom and that to an early economic freedom throughout the world the economics has become such that person is not married till 30 years 35 years now mm -hmm. so these things they'll increase then the child the pubertal age has decreased mm -hmm. while the marital age has increased twice what it used to be so the gap of 15 to 20 years and that to that part of age group which is most sexually active hormonally they are at the top they are at peak uh, 20 25 30 and now they are not married so all these things they are bound to increase so if a person gets good education early on leading to a good job 
well secured job i think much of these pornography and other sexual and gender issues they'll the, the, there'll be a solution i have that. something to add on uh, i'll just come back to you because we have another guest who's been waiting very patiently so i'm sorry anita for interrupting you over there but dr nisha khanna she's a psychologist also she joins in uh, dr khanna thank you very much for coming in uh, just wanted to ask you as far as uh, pornography because we've had a uh, we've discussed uh, almost everything thread but uh, in terms of sexual violence in terms of uh, unnatural sexual acts or un uh, unnatural sex we remember the nirbhaya case and there was a whole uh, furore after that about pornography and how these uh, the uh, the assailants had watched pornography before and they were in a heightened state of sexual arousal and therefore went and did this can we blame pornography or do we blame ourselves the basic thing is uh, when you watch pornography there are certain things which are not possible for a simple man hmm. so it is not that whatever it is on the pornography that definitely somewhere deviates us from the normal routine also hmm. like sometimes the it's good for when the person is not sexually satisfied from the partner but it also raise the unrealistic expectations from the person's end sometimes the partner is comfortable or sometimes the partner is not but comfortable. what about sexual like, violence for rape cases yeah. so definitely it helps to excite the person it would uh, somewhere um, uh, excite and uh, stimulate the person to perform the sexual act and sometimes if you are having a lack of self control then it definitely given uh, raise to these such incidents like rape in nirbhaya case also they already watched the porn and then they got excited for that so somewhere these pornography have merits as well as demerits pornography helps those couples or even those people who have an afraid of sex mm -hmm. who think sex is a bad act mm -hmm. and one thing i want to clear it when you talk about a intimate relationship and sex sex is somewhere a biological as well as physiological need mm -hmm. it is no relation with emotions when you talk about a intimate relationship then definitely it has a relationship with emotions so uh, sometimes people are thinking about having a sex so it is a physical need when you talk about the basic human rights thirst hunger and sex is one of the basic physical biological need of a human so person should focus on somewhere the need of the person also so it is very necessary the person should fulfill the, those demands either by their partner if sometimes uh, do, during the counseling of marital counseling number of times one of the partner is not comfortable having sex even they are rigid about the idea of having sex with the partner so at that time these pornography even the sexual videos help them to explore slowly slowly and get the educate them about these needs i would say i was listening in the conversation one of the doctor was saying uh, that somewhere there is a age gap between the 18 to 19 till 30 35 it's a long gap i would be able to appreciate that it is one of the major reason where sexual urges are they are inside the person and the, they, these are somewhere the uh, right ways how you can explore but one thing in india there is one uh, drawback also if two people want to have sex and due to the indian society then the uh, families are not letting the couple to do the sex then somewhere i would say those places or secured places would be there where person go and have sex if the couple is ready to do or with their own permissions or with their own will they want to involve into a sexual activity it should not be uh, we should not stop that we should find out such places that where the couple can go if they want to fulfill the desires of sexual needs then it would think that these rape cases would be reduced somewhere because due to the indian culture it is not an easy for uh, a man or a woman to uh, talk more openly about the sexual habits and a number of times it's very few families who are giving the sexual education all right all right uh, anita you wanted to come in earlier yeah we really need to reflect upon one uh, basic point the self esteem and self acceptance point mm -hmm. most of the uh, sexual violence and uh, cases like such are the extreme cases where uh, there is a lot of uh, disorientation in terms of self acceptance and uh, self esteem issues so um, i mean with boys i have generally seen that kind of tendency i may be wrong he'll be able to uh, add on further to it because uh, i'm i am not an expert in pornography sites and all that so but uh, i'm sure he is <laughs> <laughs> so because i i haven't watched them either yeah. many of them so i cannot really comment on them but uh, the point is that uh, when a person is lacking in self esteem and self acceptance so obviously he wants to overpower and uh, you know uh, 
take control over the partner and through any ways, through any means. And sexuality, uh, the violence through the act of sex mm -hmm. is a very easy medium. So I guess, I mean, in most of the uh, cases of rape and all other uh, molestations and uh, sexual abuses, the self-esteem and self-acceptance issue is a very major issue. If we really need to, I mean, we really need to take care of the psyche of the individual. How, what is the childhood? What is the kind of education he has gone through? And what is the kind of thought process and ideology he is hopping through um, uh, for uh, sex, uh, sex as such? and. Uh, as a gender also. All right, so, so I think we've reached pretty, pretty much a consensus that there needs to be a lot more education as far as uh, sex and uh, pornography are concerned. But uh, in a society of a billion people where you do not have the same socio-economic background for anybody, I mean, it could vary so if somebody with a laptop to an iPad to somebody with nothing at all, not even food to eat. But at the end of the day, everybody is still a sexual being. So how do we, uh, uh, let's, define, let's confine it to relationships. How do we ensure that sex in relationships does not get badly affected by pornography and if it is, it is in terms of in there in there in a relationship then how should it be used positively uh, dr khanna i'll start with you i would say that uh, i am right now even handling one of the marital dispute where mm. one couple is not involved into a sexual activity they are married from last seven years and the husband is regularly in the habit of watching the porn mm -hmm. as he is rejecting his wife on the basis that physically the wife is not looking smarter as compared to him. Mm -hmm. So somewhere if you will see that this pornography is also even uh, during the counselling, after the counselling settings, he started uh, having the sex with the partner. Mm -hmm. But it is not uh, yet that regular as uh, he is trying to avoid the counselling settings. But one of the things I would uh, try to raise it here in sex, uh, marital counselling when such situations are arises, we are telling to fix that limitations because most of the time I would say more or less how much I agree, uh, how much the cases of the marital counselling I am dealing with, more or less in every second case I will say the partners are watching, the, especially the males, I would not uh, deny the females are not but males are almost watching the pawns. But when the couple is not involved into a sexual activity, then definitely watching pawns also impact and lower down their tendency because they are satisfying by their own self. Or through the masturbation process also they are satisfying themselves. And then uh, in other case of also a 25 years of marriage when the couple had just two kids even out of ages, uh, out of a blue, uh, when incidentally the sex happened. But in although both the cases, it is an issue of not only the self-esteem sometimes, uh, in the rape cases, the person wants to show the dominance also through the sexual activity. Right. So, to, to address that self-esteem issue. Uh, but uh, it's not, I mean, men would also feel insecure after watching uh, pornography, won't they? I mean, it's not just confined to women and their body image or expectation from their partner. But for women, the same expectation would be there. I mean, after all, we're human beings. It's not different man or woman, right? Huh, exactly. That's what I had pointed out in the initial part of our program, that uh, it's both uh, the expectation from the female as well as what the per male person himself is expecting to, dig, uh, to give. Uh, the duration of the act, the kind of act, those uh, various animal kind of acts. So everything is... Uh, Even in getting insecure about your own body type. Yes, and exactly. The own person's own se uh, sexuality and body image uh, and the consciousness of it. It takes a hit by watching a porn. So the expectation and the, the expectations are sky high, but... Uh, Actually, the person himself. So, what is the solution? Is the solution one one thing I had uh, said one is economics that will take care of something, but moral education and proper sexual education needs to be inculcated. I I really see that many of the schools now they are not giving a good moral education at all now. Moral education has taken a back seat. So ultimately, morality involves respecting a person. Mm. So the person can be male, female, mother, father, everyone, daughter, son, brother, neighbor, everything. So that morality has to be there. Even if you are lustful, even if you are greedy, that control needs to be taught. Unless and until that basic control is taught, these things will continue to happen. Another thing is that many of these gory sexual incidents, they have taken place under the influence of some kind of 
may be an alcohol or marijuana or something like that, those drugs. So those drugs and alcohol intake, it has to be radically curbed and properly monitored. So these things, if they are taken care of, I don't think uh, then we can perhaps be a healthy it can be reduced. Yes, it problem. can be reduced. I don't think any time it will be zero, but it can be reduced. All right, uh, Anita, final comments? Yeah, uh, I affirm these uh, statements that we really need to check on. And uh, plus, I would uh, like to say that self acceptance issues, acceptance of your body and uh, your self-image, it has to be positively nurtured at every step. So education and communication regarding that self-image, the body type, because most of the times there is a real self and there is an ideal self. Mm -hmm. So if there is a conflict in your real self in whatever ways and in sexual manifestations also, so whenever there is a, uh, the gap is wider, between the real self and the ideal self, more the conflicts, more the turmoils, and more the uh, kind of uh, sexual violence and uh, getting indulgent into all those uh, activities. All right, on that note, we'll have to wrap, wrap up completely. Uh, we've run out of time. Dr. Nishakana, thank you very much for coming in. It was a pleasure to have you over here. Thank Anita. you so much. Also, Dr. Tiwari, so it was much. a pleasure to have you over here. Well, that's it on this conversation. What do you think? Let's talk about sex. It's not a taboo word. Let's talk about pornography. If you like it, share it with us. I'm not pornography, but why do you like it? Or what do you think about it? Do you think it should be banned? Do share your opinion. Let's talk about, let's start this conversation. And I promise you many more such conversations. Well, that's it for now. But the conversations, of course, continue right here on India Post Live.